there and welcome to my channel. So my name is Alice and I'm super excited for the video that I'm going to share with you guys today. So I'm painting on something called masa, masa, masa paper. And um, so what it says, like when I Google masa paper, is it says that um, it is a paper that is made in Japan um, of sulfite pulp and it's versatile and it's also a really strong paper. And so what I'm doing with this paper is my mom got it and she scrunched it up to paint on it. So because it's really thin, she scrunched it up and then she glued it onto watercolor paper and then she gave it to me. <laughs> so I have this cool little like sheet of crumpled watercolor paper essentially to paint on. So she said that, yeah, so she scrunched it up and then she flattens it out again. And then she says that you're going to want to stick it the shiny smooth side up and you want to stick it onto watercolor paper with some PVA glue. That's just basically your regular like Elmer's glue. Um, and then you should be able to paint on it. So that's what we're doing today. We're painting on this wrinkly, cool masa paper. And it was really, really fun to do. I really enjoyed this. Um, so as you can see, it has this really cool crumpled up wrinkled texture. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, like you know that I love texture. Like I am all about granulation. Um, when I use watercolor paper, I prefer cold press or rough because there's more texture to it. So this was really like right up my alley in terms of something that I wanted to try or play with. So I decided to create a piece that I thought was going to work well with the texture of this paper because it's a really, like I said, it's a really texture paper. You're literally crumpling paper up and then sticking it to watercolor paper. So I knew that I needed to create a piece that kind of worked with that texture because as you can see, the watercolor does this really cool thing where it kind of sinks um, into and collects where the, the folds and the crumples are. And so you get this really cool effect where it's darker there. And so I decided that it would be a good idea to do basically like a picture of some plants because it would imitate the veins and the texture that nature has. Has. And then I also decided to draw this little statue. So this is based on a little photo that I took a while back of this little fairy statue that I have in my garden. My garden is completely overgrown. Like it's, it's just, it's basically like a homeless yard. Like we don't do anything with it. We want to do more with it, but like it's just completely overgrown with weeds and stuff. But basically I have this little fairy statuette and it's like all overgrown and I thought that picture would be a perfect inspiration picture for this because she's a little gray statue so I thought that the cracks again would work really well for drawing like a statue that's like hiding and covered in all of these leaves and foliage so that is what I decided to do for this piece and I have been really enjoying working in a very loose and natural way recently especially with watercolor so when I created the sketch as you saw earlier I was pretty loose I just kind of defined the overall areas and then I really went in and defined a lot more with the watercolor and I just kind of decided to see where the watercolor took me and what shape um like emerged and that's kind of uh the process that I took like I created the the main leaves and the main plants that were in the foreground and kind of based those off the photo and then I just started adding in darker layers to you know like cut out certain leaves and add more depth and I just kind of built that up over time and that's one of the ways that I find is really effective if you want to work with watercolor without really um doing much sketching is to really start lighter and then just build up your darks on top and you're slowly kind of cutting out the areas it's almost like working um with like negative space in a way um well it is that's working with negative space well it's not like white paper so I don't know if it counts as negative space but you know what I'm trying to say um maybe I don't know if you do if you don't tell me in the comments and I will probably poorly explain it there as well <laughs> um and then I worked on the little statue so the statue was a little bit tricky because I was trying to get in some more fine details and I knew when I started this that like fine details were not made for this kind of paper um so I was trying to keep it pretty loose and also you know I did have the sun was kind of shining on the top of her head and then most of her face was in shadow and so I was trying to like make sure I got that effect and that 
you know, the bottom of her face was in shadow, but also you could still see the facial features. So what worked really well for me in this situation, and this is something that works really well if you're ever having an issue with your watercolor, watercolor paper, where it's hard for you to get details. There's a lot of reasons this can happen, whether it's something like this, where I'm working on a very textured surface, or whether it's something like your paper has taken as much watercolor as it can, and you're really struggling, everything's bleeding out. Like You may have had that experience where even though your paper is dry and you're trying to paint, it's still bleeding. And and kind of fuzzing at the edges and a lot of times that's just like related to the paper certain papers can really only take so many layers of watercolor before you start having that issue and so if that is an issue that you're having I highly recommend going over with watercolor pencils you can really define a lot more that way and then you can just soften them up um, and you're going to be able to get cleaner lines and more details and that's what I went and did over her face and that really helped to bring out the details of her face without like making it too contrasty or stark. You know that I am always here for a little bit of uh, droplets. So I took a variety of different colors of watercolor. I didn't use an opaque paint. I used yellow and some green and I splattered that over the whole thing. I really wanted to get this kind of, uh, you know, really add to this loose and painterly effect. And also it gave some green on her. So it was kind of like moss growing on her. For some final touches, I wanted to go in with some white, but again, I wanted to keep things really soft and I didn't want it to be too stark or too harsh. So I'm using the Copic Liquid Opaque White, which I actually got from a palette pack. Shout out to palette packs. We love them. Um, and that's what I use to build up the white. This is nice because if you use it thickly, not thickly, but like if you fully mix it and stuff, um, you get a really opaque white, but it's really easy to blend out and soften with with some water and that's what I did for this. I used it on the face and then I went ahead and decided I wanted to add some brighter highlights to the leaves. I was also intrigued as to how this white opaque paint was going to look on the textured surface. So that was another reason I decided to do that because I was really enjoying playing around with this textured surface and seeing what things looked like on it and um, different ways to use it. So I added in that white just to increase the contrast and really start bringing out even more of these leaves that um, I have suggested in the background. And once I was done with the white, there was one last thing that I really had to add because you know, I can't have some art without some shine. So once I had added in all of the white, I decided to go in with some metallic paints. I went went, went in with the Chameleon Fine Tech paints um, that I have shown in a previous video. Um, there's like a review if you would like to check that out, but these are so pretty and they have a lot of good greens. So I thought it would be really good to add a little bit of extra glow to this piece. Um, so yeah, that is what I created on this masa paper. Um, I knew, by the way, when I put the um, the tape on, I was pretty positive that that was going to rip the paper. It actually didn't rip it as much as I thought I was going to. It was going to, but I put the tape down to keep the paper flat and still on the the desk. And then when I peeled it up, I was pretty careful. Although I, like I said, I was surprised it didn't rip as much as I thought it was going to, but then I just went and I chopped off the edges. So it was nice and clean. And that's how I did that. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed working with Masa Paper. Um, hopefully, if you liked this video, maybe you can go get some Masa Paper at your store or online um, and try this technique. Like I said, um, you just crumple it up and then stick it on the watercolor paper um, with the PVA glue. So yeah, I enjoyed this. I have a couple more sheets of this, so uh, you may see this show up in a video again, maybe with some different supplies. Maybe I'll try a couple different techniques on this this type of paper. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of me create on this paper. Shout out to my mom for putting it all together, making it for me, and then giving it to me so that I had a cool idea for a video. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, let me know in the comments if you've ever tried masa paper or if you want to try it now. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.